Hi everyone, this is Ryan with Modern Mainframe and bringing you another video. Today we're going to talk about how to get your own mainframe. A lot of people I talk to in the industry just say that mainframes are old, they're obsolete, uh, they're too hard to get into, and why don't you just run your stuff on Linux? And so I'm going to try to combat one of those things today. Um, a lot of people have their own virtual machines running either Windows development software, Linux systems, that's kind of where they learn everything. It's really difficult to learn the mainframe uh, without actually working at a mainframe shop or being a system programmer. I'm going to try to dispel that myth just a little bit today. Uh, one route to go is the way that Connor Kurkowski went. Uh, 18 year old bought a mainframe from Rutgers, tried to get it into his parents basement, had to do some demolition. But in the end, he did have his own mainframe up and running. Um, got a little help from the vendors. That was great support. If you haven't heard the story, please check it out. I'll post it in the description below. Uh, Connor's done a couple uh, different uh, presentations. Really inspiring to hear these young kids doing this stuff again. But um, today we're going to talk about a little bit easier way. Um, all we're going to need is a Linux system, some emulation software, and you can have your own mainframe running on your system. So without further ado, let's build a new mainframe. So step one is going to be head over to Modern Mainframer website. We have a um, tutorial up there. It's going to be pretty basic step-by-step -step instructions. Step one, we say get a Debian-based server going. I don't care what Linux distro you use. Debian is just where I grew up and I'm comfortable. Feel free to use whatever you want. Um, so step two is to get some uh, software. You're going to need the MVS operating system. So we can't run ZOS because ZOS is a license-based software. We don't have enough money here to fund a whole system. So there are some free versions of MVS out there. They're pretty old, but they still work. Um, Mr. Maynard out there was nice enough to put together his own little software package. He calls it Turnkey. It has all the hardware configurations ready for us already. So we can just pop that onto our system. It's, you're going to download it as a zip. It's going to be an ISO inside. Extract that guy out and upload it to your server. The second piece of software we need is the 3270 emulation. If you have your own already, that's great. Just configure it to work with your system. If not, go ahead and grab this free software. Um, I'll show you how to configure it later in the video. So step three is to install Hercules on your server. So Hercules is your emulation software. He's gonna emulate the um, mainframe hardware. He's gonna kinda act as your HMC if you're familiar with one of those. So let's just get into this. So I'm gonna log into my server over here. So on my server, I already got this stuff set up, but I'll walk you through the install anyways. So if you're on Debian-based uh, Ubuntu, hey, so have it. You can do a sudo apt get install Hercules. So Hercules is already in the repos out there. Makes the, um, I forgot my password. Makes the install really nice to do. There it goes. So if you don't have it installed, you'll see the install log go there. I already have it, so it tells me I already have it. Um, just going to follow along with the tutorial now. Um, so we installed Hercules. We want to upload the turnkey uh, ISO folder up there. So I just put in my home directory, put a CD into that. We can see that all the software's here. We got a setup file we can run. So we're just going to run that setup file with a dash A. This is going to take all the system defaults that come shipped with it. Uh, they're fine. Trust me, it'll just make everything work a lot smoother. Um, by the way, I think it comes from the factory uh, non-executable. Just go ahead and change your permissions on that guy so you can execute him. So now that we hit the button, we see all of our default options. We see the source and target come into the home directory. That's fine. We see a Telnet console port. This is 3270. It doesn't have to be 3270. It's just nice and convenient. Um, that's going to be the port that we're going to uh, kind of Telnet into using VTAM. There's a web server port. If you want to manage your system from a browser-based kind of thing, it's out there. Um, everything else looks good. We're just going to give that an OK. And we see it starts to build out the system over to that install directory. So there's our defaults with how many consoles we're going to have. That's cool. It's going to prompt you to enter a master catalog password. Go ahead and just type that in right there, secret. And you're done. So it's going to tell you that to start it up, head into that install directory, press start MVS. So we're just going to hop back there. So you see it puts it in this folder called MVS38J, does CD into there, and you see we got our start command there. So we're going to do a start MVS. 
And right here, it's going to warn us. It's going to say, make sure before you IPO your system, you have your master consoles and your terminals set up already. So let's just hop into that right now. So from your 3270 emulator software, you're going to get an executable. There's a session wizard out there. So here's a session wizard. This is going to allow you to create all your configurations for your 3270 sessions. I already got mine set up, but uh, we'll just walk through another one. So one to create a new session. Enter session name, we'll call it master console. It's going to ask you for the IP address of your server. So that is your um, Ubuntu Debian Linux machine that you have. Mine is over at 123 right now. We're going to leave everything else the same except for the TCP port. We're going to change that to that 3270 port number. Everything looks good. Give it an OK. We're going to give that a yes to create the file. And we're going to give it a yes to create a desktop shortcut for us. At this time, we also want to set up our TSO sessions. Um, do that same pattern with the TSO sessions. I'll show you the ones that I got set up. So if we just go to TSO1. Same thing. It's going to ask you for your server name. Um, just give it your IP address. You're going to give it the TCP port of 3270. The only difference here is we're going to give it a logical unit name. So the LU name is going to tell uh, VTAM which kind of device to come in on. So we see option two. We're going to want to give that a 00 Charlie 0. That's what the system's kind of expecting. So I give it that, give it an OK. And we're done there. So you can give it an 8 to quit. It'll close it out for you. So. Now you got two uh, desktop shortcuts. I'll drag them on the session. They kind of look like this. So if you just double click those guys, they'll pop them up for you. So there's my console and here's my TSO session. Let's bring this over there. We press OK and we see that the sessions connect and we have Hercules up and running right now. So he's expecting us a command. We're gonna tell him to IPL 148. This is telling the system to go after our device unit 148 for the IPL instructions. So if we give that an OK, we see the console. It starts spinning up, and it's asking us for some system parameters. Uh, usually, here is where you give it a sysparm kind of thing. This is a very basic system. We don't have much configuration going on. So we're going to give it a very basic R00, CLPA. So what's going on right now is we're telling the system we want to reply with the R. Um, it, usually you'll see these things associated with uh, two numbers, or message IDs. Uh, we are so early in the system startup that we don't have those yet, so we're just going to reply 00. And then we're going to type in CLPA. CLPA says create link pack area for us. So we're going to go ahead and hit that, and we see that we start loading up the system. If you don't shut down your system and you just sweep the legs like I do because I'm very impatient, you'll um, get this message sometimes on startup depending on where Jez2 failed. So what we want to do here to clear this, this is basically telling us that we can't get a uh, data set lock on the Jez2 checkpoint file. So we want to tell him that everything is okay and to ignore it. We're going to reply yes to this guy. And he's going to tell us that we got to correct the problems and we got to restart Jez2. So if you hop over to the tutorial, because I never remember these guys, we have all the uh, commands here for the IPL and even a little section to get you through this. Um, so we're just going to do a start jez2, comma, 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 parm equals format, no requeue. What this is telling the system is we're going to format the Jez2 spool. We're just going to wipe it clean, and we're not going to wait for it to request. It's not going to request anything from the operator itself. It's just going to go ahead and start it up. So we get this again. We say unable to get the data set lock point. So here's the message ID I was talking about. See that 01? So we're going to reply to 01 with a yes again. And then it's going to ask us to confirm that we want to change the checkpoint. Um, if you're running a real system and stuff, this, this stuff matters. We don't care right now. This is a little test system. We don't care. We can wipe everything. So we reply to 0, 02 with a yes. And we see that Jez2 starts a cold start. So a cold start versus a warm start. Cold start is starting from square one. It's all scratch data. Uh, a warm start will take into account where Jez was when you shut the system down. If you shut down your system clean, you won't have to do any of this. But I'm impatient and just sweep my legs of my system. So we see on our console we have this uh, message waiting 
kind of thing here. We want to set our council to roll delete mode. Uh, it's We got a hotkey already on there. If you just PF11, it'll set your council into roll delete mode. So all your messages will start scrolling off your screen. So it's system takes a couple seconds to start up. Once you see that this um, kind of we come through, we missed it already, but I think TSO and VTAM are already up. If we want to double check that, we can give it a D for display, A comma L. This will show you all the started tasks on there, and we can see that net and TSO are up. So those are the two important things we need to get our TSO session logged on. So if we hop over to our TSO session right here, we see that the screen is a little bit different because he was able to connect in, and we get presented with this logon screen. If you just use the default IBM user, you can get onto your system and you see that you're launched right into native TSO. So at this point, we got a running system. That's cool. Uh, you, you know, you usually hop into ISPF. Uh, it's not there. Uh, ISPF is a paid function. Um, we don't have any money, so we can't afford ISPF. Luckily, there's some clones out there. We have RPF, that's Rob's programming facility. So he was nice enough to provide this. Um, it does all your functionality. You can view, edit, delete, okay, that kind of stuff. So you can get around the system there. You also don't have uh, SDSF, you have Q, which was the predecessor. It's, it's basic, there's tons of documentation out there. Just uh, go ahead and give it a read. If you want me to do a video on how to use Q or RPF, just let me know, uh, no hair off my back. So we can do that as well. And yeah, that's, that's it, you have a mainframe you can go ahead and go play around with so you can view your data sets and everything. So at this point, have fun. Um, I'll show you how to shut it down. I won't make you sit through the whole thing. So if you give it an X, you log off of um, RPF. So you're back into native TSO. On your council, if you give it a F, BSP pilot, shut now. This is a little routine that comes packaged with the turnkey software to um, automate the shutdown. So you'll start seeing all the started tasks die. Uh, it takes a few seconds. Once all your started tasks are down, JES2 will be the only thing left up and running. We can go ahead and kill JES2 and then give it a, um, a ZEOD to pause your SMF recording. So as you th see things dying, you can give a D, ALs, see what's running still. We still see the BSP pilot routine is still running certain stuff down. So give it a couple seconds. We see BSP pilot ended now. So if we go ahead and check this again, we see JES2 and SMF daily are starting. Um, yeah, it's the system's pretty slow, but um, if you guys don't want to wait, you're like me. If you just hop up to your uh, council session up there on your Hercules system, and just type in a quit, it'll just kill the system. Now, it's not going to be a clean startup, but I, I don't care. If you guys do care, you can wait for your system to shut down and uh, practice, I guess, good behavior. So that's, that's all I got. Um, yeah, again, so the tutorial's over at modernmainframer.com. Check it out. Feel free to pause this video. I go really fast when I'm teaching this stuff. It's um, just in my nature to talk fast when I talk about things that are exciting to me. So that's all I got. Uh, comment if you got any comments. If you got questions, please let me know. Reach out directly. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any other new content coming out. We're going to try to get this going on a pretty good routine. And until next time, uh, guys, if you have any questions, seriously, just reach out. And uh, that's all I got. So see you guys later.